Sorry? Yes, so we see, uh, we see you again. Okay. Thank you. Ken, are you going to sh share your screen um, so we can see the results? Yes, you, you see our share screen and you haven't uh, turned on your camera as well. Yes. You see us with the yes. Yeah. Can you see the screen? Okay. Uh, no, I'm not seeing you. Just a minute. Oh, oh yeah, got it now. Thank you. Okay, so we have uh, four groups, is that? Uh, actually, one? I closed this okay. is it offline, so we will type it, yeah. Yep. Okay, so um, uh, group one, um, would someone like to speak for group one and explain your decisions? Group one, who would like to speak? Anh <laughs> 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 Okay, uh, so I'm not the team leader, but uh, they push me for good. <laughs> okay, so uh, let's uh, look like at the natural hazard. I think that uh, in Hanoi, the natural hazard uh, effect is low and uh, mm -hmm. that's unlikely because uh, uh, we uh, we does have storm, but we do, do not have earthquake or something. So I think we are quite safe. Uh, sometimes we have heavy rain, but uh, the effect is not much. Just so mm -hmm. we, uh, uh, if, even if we have flood, it's less than one day. Okay. So the same for CP. Yes. Can I ask uh, why you have rated consequence low when it's one of your main hubs? Because uh, un unlike uh, Ho Chi Minh City, we uh, we, we have less flood and we does not have heavy rain in the short time period like Ho Chi Minh City. Okay, understood. <laughs> so I think the same for Sydney where uh, you don't have uh, much storm, you don't have earthquake and uh, uh, it is unlikely to ha happen. Mm -hmm. And uh, for the Nha Trang, Cam Ranh, uh, we uh, we do have storm, but uh, uh, the possibility is uh, is uh, quite uh, it's not as much as uh, other middle uh, uh, middle provinces of Vietnam. But when the storm comes, it does have effects on the um, uh, airports because uh, last last week we does have the airport to Cam Ranh and we have to cancel some flights to it. But it's only about. Uh, one day and we have uh, different flights the next day to carry the passengers. So I think the effect is middle. Okay, interesting. Can I just talk about Sydney a moment? It's, um, earlier on, I talked about having to repeat risk assessments because of situations changing. And I think Sydney would be a good example where the natural hazard profile may have changed a little bit uh, because of their forest fires. Um, the, the fires they've been having are pretty extreme now and they're becoming more frequent. So there may be a case for saying that the risk will increase in Sydney because of the probability of a significant smoke event shutting down the airport is higher. 
Mm. I'm not saying you're wrong at all. I'm just raising that as a, as a good example of how the hazard profile might be changing over time. But, but there's the forest fire is so severe as the airplane cannot land or they have to cancel the flight? That's what I'm suggesting. It has been very, very severe at times. Mm. Just an example of where we have to be mindful that the profile may change over time. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay, yep. Potential. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, let me uh, let me one. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So uh, you think that in 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 Hanoi we still sometimes have the electricity cut power off? Okay. Yes, power cut. So um, uh, we have it uh, when this happened. It is uh, have a high effects to the airports. Mm -hmm. uh, but it unlikely happens. Okay, so I, I think that the Sydney has better infrastructure than Vietnam, so it is a very low risk and unlikely to happen. And for Nha Trang, it is in the provinces, so we raise it into a higher... Uh, uh, okay. Yes, yes uh, in the, to the, I don't know, medium mass, in the medium mass. Medium mm -hmm. risk and un unlikely. The regions we don't have civil unrest. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, for, for terrorists also at uh, Sydney, but mm -hmm. uh, we all see that this uh, potential civil unrest and terrorist event is uh, low and unlikely for all these three cities. Okay. So for potential impact on to schedule, we see that this is a high effect to the company uh, and the high possibility high possibility. Higher, higher. Mm -hmm. uh, because mm -hmm. uh, in Hanoi, we usually uh, fix the runway. Is it the runway? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Yes, yeah. because mm -hmm. it's about one or twice a year, so it has a high effect. To, uh, uh, we have the same issue with the uh, uh, campaign. Uh, because uh, the runway uh, quality is not so good, so sometimes we have the bad cut on the low level. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> on the on the on the runway. Uh, it is the right to right watch. So we raise Hanoi to, to number to number six and Cambridge to number four. But I think that uh, the effects on schedule on Sydney is uh, low and uh, is a. Uh, it's low and it's unlikely to happen because we don't remember anything about Sydney. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, yeah. We uh, we uh, we based on the the, um, the even that our aircraft uh, report to us about the tide and wheel uh, when uh, foreign objects uh, can damage our aircraft. Hmm. So the overall score, we have the average of all the points we have here. So we have the last column. Right, understood. Thank you. Um, the, I'm just thinking the overall score. Normally what we do would be, we would sum the score, um, but it probably has the same effect, I think. Mm. Uh, it doesn't matter. It will still have the same ranking, won't you? Mm. Okay. No, that's really interesting. Thank you. I think that's um, a really fair, fair assessment. Okay. Any of the other groups want to comment on this before we move to then the group two? Mm. 
I think that we are a united Black Communist Party. <laughs> okay. Right. Okay. Thank you very much. That's really interesting <coughs> assessment. Uh, and group number two. So we have now three different ports. This will be interesting. Uh, yes, uh, I, on behalf of uh, group number two, I'd mm -hmm. like to uh, present for uh, uh, three airports. Uh, first one is uh, from Pain, the second is Singapore, and uh, the last one is uh, Narita, uh, Tokyo. Mm. Uh, for the uh, uh, natural hazard for from Pain, um, for 20 years, uh, arriving, um, take off and landing in, um, in, in um, uh, from Bain. I think the, the natural hazard is, um, I think the condition is good for take off and landing. And uh, the weather is uh, sometimes thunderstorm, but uh, not so long, not mm -hmm. so long. And so, um, condition mm -hmm. uh, for the potential infrastructure in in from pain uh, no, the, the airport is still small and uh, for many years um, for Vietnam allies arriving in in uh, from pain is normally earlier than schedule and we take up in time for many years so I think potential failure is uh, infrastructure is, is up to now still good for operating. Interesting. So okay. um, mm -hmm. yeah, to, for for civil unrest potential um, very, very peaceful at um, up to now uh, for the the terrorist event also. Not effect to to the airport. Um, and there no strike, and uh, no bomb threat. Nothing for twenty mm -hmm. years. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For uh, for the schedule, also um, just um, because uh, we 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 know that just for Vietnam Airlines, not for the other airlines. So uh, for Vietnam Airlines. Uh, for myself and Mr. Zung is a pilot, also arriving uh, so many times in uh, in uh, from Bay. Uh, we we ex uh, we think mm, that is uh, good, but not so so excellent. But mm, nothing affected to the schedule. So overall score is uh, low. Is a good condition uh, one point eight for overall. Mm -hmm. For the second one is Singapore, as you know, in Singapore for natural hazard is the same, same to Ho Chi Minh City. Uh, the weather is okay. Uh, the mm, typhoon happened not so frequently. Uh, uh, the thunderstorm, uh, cloud and everything not so seriously. Uh, it's same same to Ho Chi Minh City. So the potential failure of uh, infrastructure, uh, we think we think that it is good in Singapore Airport. Good in Singapore Airport. So so can I just step you through uh, natural hazard? W was it not uh, Singapore you had a, a fatality with lightning? Is it not Singapore that's covered lightning? Has it? I'm mixing uh, up with Mr. another port. Hmm. For 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 me for me uh, as a cabin attendant, uh, fly to Singapore. Uh, 
for almost every time um, we have no go around due to mm-hmm. weather. Okay. So that is good. Mm. Um, for uh, potential civil unrest uh, also, no effect. Uh, we, we expect that it's low. And uh, I think that is still in very good at the moment. So we expect uh, point, uh, point two. And overall, it's uh, 1.2. It's uh, very mm-hmm. low. Mm-hmm. And the last one is, is Tokyo. Mm-hmm. Tokyo is uh, just one point. Um, it's a uh, natural hazard. And uh, sometimes it was very windy when we land, very windy. And um, uh, earthquake, earthquake happens so many times. Yeah. So that that is uh, uh, we expect uh, is high. Mm. So the uh, the fellow uh, uh, infrastructure is uh, too still low, uh, not not like in Singapore, but uh, it's good. It's good in uh, mm-hmm. in Narita Airport, and also the same to to civil unrest mm-hmm. with the. Haven't been seen anything related to this one. No strike, nothing. Tourists also, and uh, we we expect overall score to for Tokyo Narita Airport. Mm-hmm. That is um, uh, expectation of uh, my group. Okay, interesting. Yep, that seems a very fair assessment. Thank you. It's good you have a lot of experience um, of esports. Okay, uh, group three. Thank you. Tiết ơi, chị Tiết có thể giúp em được không? Chị Tiết ơi. Alo, đại diện nhóm 3 em mời chị Nguyễn Thị Tiết được không ạ? Mình mất an toàn đi ạ. Mình thật ra là vì sao là chọn điểm mấy điểm mấy mình cũng bây giờ còn chưa thích chưa biết giải thích vì sao. Đó là Facebook đi. Không, sẽ đi không phải. I think that is wrong. So on behalf of the group three, I would like to uh, present our group's ideas about the three airports. So because of uh, the limitation of uh, our experience, so in some uh, some some uh, contents, uh, we put uh, we just put the number here. But the details we are not we are not sure. Mm-hmm. So yes. So for the first column uh, about natural hazard, we put here for Terminal Saigon Airport is uh, three. It's likely to uh, to uh, uh, occur. And uh, six and uh, six for Paris and London. Yes, about the. Uh, has that at, at we, we, we think that the um, Saigon airport uh, sometimes uh, has um, rain, strong rain. So um, sometimes we have a uh, flood. Yes. And about Paris and London, uh, actually, I, I don't know. I don't, I'm, I'm not sure about this. Um, the situation of uh, natural hazard in uh, this in these two airports. Mm. So we just uh, 
I will add more yes. information about the Paris and London. Maybe Nezra has us is about um, um, the fog, the, the fog, weather, yeah, yes. and the snow. Yes, yes. that we uh, we put this uh, six number six in this session. Yes. Okay, that's interesting. Um, yeah. yeah. I would have rated them both quite low, I think, because um, uh, it's very infrequent that um, I, that there would be a, there's no natural hazards, there's no earthquake risk really. Um, there's no flooding risk um, and snow, if they ever do get snow, I think they're equipped to, to clear the runway very quickly. Um, and I think London, it's a very long time since they had snow. It's snow is in the films, it's Christmas films, but not in reality. <laughs> so we, we can train London to, uh, to just uh, likely or? Um, unlikely, probably, I think would be. Mm, yeah, unlikely, yeah. Unlikely, yeah. yeah. But it's, uh, this does raise this really important point that um, when doing these uh, assessments for real, um, the key is to talk to people who do know and to do research. So you wouldn't be expected that one team would just have all the answers. You would talk to relevant departments or research yeah. um, weather conditions, natural hazard profiles. It's all very easy now with Google, of course, that, um, we can do research so much faster than we used to. Mm. I'm sorry. That's it. Yeah. I know. I know. That's fine. Yeah, yeah. But it's an important point. But um, when doing these assessments, uh, if you remember back to the risk process, there's communicate and consult. And this is exactly the point is you can, can communicate and consult with different teams to determine all the information. Yeah. Mm. Okay. And for the next column about the value of infrastructure, we are put here number three, it's likely to happen for Tencent Airport, because um, we understand that uh, sometimes uh, the amount of passengers uh, are, are um, so huge and the infrastructure of the Tencent Airport now is uh, so limited. So we have, uh, uh, schedule to open a new airport, a new near Tencent Airport to to uh, to, um, to resolve this problem. So do you think that uh, is uh, number three here? Mm -hmm. Three is likely to occur here. And for the Lon London and Paris airport, we think that uh, these two airport are uh, oh, um, peak airport. So the problem about the infrastructure is not uh, uh, likely happen. So we choose here it is the medium unlikely. Okay, seems fair. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. About the potential civil and unrest. Uh, so potential civil unrest and a terrorist event. I'm not sure that the, there is any difference between this uh, this uh, this columns because uh, I think that these two columns is the same meaning I think so so about the um, unrest so civil unrest we think that uh, um, Tân Airport and the other Vietnamese airport is uh, are so uh, um, I, I mean that unlikely to 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 occur uh, any civil unrest or terrorist event. Mm -hmm. uh, so we put here number one only is likely to happen. And mm -hmm. for the airport Paris and London, we think that um, it's possible to occur some terrorist event because we 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 know that uh, the situation of political polit politics are sometimes uh, are not um, unstable. Mm -hmm. 
with that here, we can put uh, number four, medium, number four, medium for, for both uh, columns of uh, Paris and London airport. Okay, interesting. Yeah, I think you're referring to um, for Paris, the, what are they called? The yellow shirts. Yes. Yellow shirts, yellow. that's right. Yellow, yes, mm. yellow, yeah. Mm. Yes. Mm, interesting. interesting. Yeah. Mm. Yes. And about the uh, about the potential impact of schedule here. Mm. So actually, uh, we uh, we don't understand clearly about this impact. I think that impact is uh, other effects to the schedule uh, besides the the fourth, the previous fourth uh, columns. So we think that um, for for own airports, we put the possibilities high, high. So we put number six and and nine here. Okay. Um, it's interesting you make that comment. Um, the intention of that column yeah. actually, and I think perhaps uh, group two may have uh, wetted it slightly. The, the intention is the effect on your company schedule. So if it's a hub, it'll have a much greater effect than if it's a, a distant port or a, you're just flying to and from with one aircraft. So that's how we're supposed to be rating that column is the effect on your own schedules. Mm rather than perhaps an individual flight. For the impact, yeah. So I think, uh, sorry. Yes. You. So there at the long the range of your your um, routes. And so uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, are there many connecting flights? I suppose is a good question. There may well be, I guess. If there are many connecting flights, um, then clearly the impact is higher than if there are no connecting flights yeah. and it's just what yeah. So uh, your your rating might well be right. I'm just um just remarking that. Mm. Yeah, yes. Okay, so that's a 5.4 and a 4.4. So um, for overall score, yes, for overall score, yes, yes. So this is all from our books. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yep. So at most, it looks like Paris is um, at the highest risk. <laughs> of disruption, hmm. I think. Okay, um, are we doing group four now or? Uh, yes, group four. Yeah. So, em mời anh chị nhóm bốn ạ, thì mình sẽ đọc để bọn em điền vào trong bảng này ạ. <cười> <laughs> yeah, for group four, um, we have all two except the uh, Los Angeles uh, route. We have the uh, schedule uh, for impact to schedule. Actually, uh, we don't have fly to Los Angeles now. We just have the uh, uh, to uh, just start it to San Francisco only. All right. So, um,
escort that much. Uh, sorry, I was meaning at um, in California, California. Hmm. We haven't had any uh, event of uh, earthquake in uh, California. Yeah, so um, I'm just a little mindful. Um, There's quite a bit commentary about your own experience, uh, your own, you know, over the last few years. Um, but we do need to be mindful of the rare event, but very significant event. So that's why I raised earthquake. We may not have experienced it. It's many years since, well, it's some years in San Francisco had an earthquake, but they have had some very significant earthquakes. Yeah. Actually, I mean, yeah. I have a search on Google, but we don't have uh, more information about it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to remember when the last one was. It was the 1980s, I think. Yeah, a really big one. Mm. Where the roads, the uh, elevated highways collapsed. Right. From, yeah. Uh -huh. um, they had a two double decker motorway and the top fell onto the bottom. Um, and here in New Zealand, suddenly we're strengthening all our bridges because. If we, because, we do the risk mm, uh, for uh, Tokyo, so I will mm, put up the uh, mm, concern. Mm. Okay, thank you. And so, what score have we got here? We've got two, 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 and a four, which is uh, 12 divided by five. Which gives us uh, 2.4, doesn't it? Yeah. And then we have two and two. Mm. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, group four and group five. <clears throat> Good morning, good morning, everyone. Uh, on behalf of number five, I have uh, present the idea about the uh, three airports in Vietnam. The first one in the Tanzania Airport, uh, the second one in Hanoi Bay Airport and Kampen Airport. And uh, it's a happy about the three airports, it's the international airport in Vietnam. And the first one uh, about the natural hazards, Tanzania and Hanoi is the same, but um, the same level one, unlikely. Uh, but uh, sometimes it's have, in Hanoi it's have storm, and sometimes in Ho Chi Minh City, it has the heavy rain, and it's the impact to landing and take up of the airplane. And uh, sometimes it, the airplane is divert to Cambodia and Da Nang. Uh, and um, about the campaign is the um, level four uh, in the possibility because uh, in the middle of Vietnam uh, have a very uh, two or three storm in the middle and we uh, identify that's level four. Okay. About the mm. potential failure of the infrastructure, the Tanzanian and Hanoi is the same and uh, we have uh, identified its level one unlikely. Um, but uh, in the past three years, it's had the attack to the data from the IT uh, in our company and we have the risk in here. Okay, interesting. Yeah, mm. yeah. and uh, in the time bank, we have um, the new airport international uh, for restructure, but uh, it's the only one, the tower, control tower. I think uh, it's the need more control tower for uh, standby if have the problem. Okay. And uh, about the potential saving and unrest and terrorist event, uh, um, with the Tasmania Airport and Hanoi uh, Airport in the same location, and um, the, about the resident um, 
about the location it, and economy is the same. And we set that at the level one. But in the Cam Ranh, it's um, more complex, complex because uh, a resident come from uh, China, come from the Russian and Vietnam, and the uh, terrorist is uh, very difficult to control. Okay, yeah. interesting. Mm. About the potential of the schedule, is the uh, high risk in here in Ho Chi Minh and Hanoi because um, infrastructure in the Ho Chi Minh and Hanoi have a limit runway and uh, the fly the capacity not enough to allow the airline come from and uh, so many airline go to two group. Uh, too hot and uh, the airplane is uh, on the line to take up and landing and it's the effect on the schedule uh, operation of our airplane uh, our company and uh, I we set up at the level six um, how about the campaign it's the level one online because um, now it's have only uh, the fly from the Russia and China and uh, Korea it's come from the campaign. Uh, but the, and in here is the that's all. Thank you for listening. Very interesting. Thank you. Um, yeah, that's new information for me. That's really interesting. Uh, so the scores we've got here are uh, 10 divided by 5, so 2. And 2. And 16, 17 divided by 5 gives us uh, 3.4. Okay, so it'll be interesting just to look down all those ports and see whether um, we've got London at 4.4, Paris at 5.4, and the next one was the last one, wasn't it? 3.4. And what was uh, LA again? That was quite low, wasn't it? 2.4. Okay. Do, do people feel that? Um, so we got Paris as the highest risk because I think the terrorist threat and the civil unrest threat is relatively high. Uh, London has been um, raised because of its potential effect on the schedule, because it's a busy place, I guess. And there's also a certain level of at least terrorist um, threat. Um, so that's pushing that one up. Los Angeles, because of its uh, busy and potential effect on the schedule. Oh, we have a two point, yeah, 2.4. Okay, do people feel that's a fair assessment? Do you think you've probably correctly profiled, um, rated these against each other fairly? Would anyone strongly disagree with any of these assessments? Seems so. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. We quite agree with uh, uh, Paris and London uh, because uh, in Paris, if you uh, have a delay and then uh, you need to submit the uh, flight plan and wait for another three hours, so uh, mm -hmm. the schedule will affect much. Mm -hmm. So, so you agree that that should be rated high on the schedule? Is that right? 
And we also have the, the risk of uh, uh, strike there, uh, and, and then the uh, whole fly will uh, be affected. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, so that seems that everyone agrees that Paris should be. We can do a risk profile across the organization. And this is just one example of how you could do that. Um, this is a sort of exercise that would be done by a business continuity team or a business continuity manager type person um, because they're doing the overall business. Um, the next uh, exercise that we'll do will be more down what is typically done down at the departmental or functional level. Hmm. So before we move on, is there any comments on that? Trước khi mà chuyển sang cái mục tiếp theo đó, thì anh chị nào mà chưa hiểu là muốn thầy giải thích kỹ thêm về cái um, cái cái bài này thì uh, anh chị cứ nêu ý kiến đó. Rồi rồi em có nghe thấy anh có anh chị nào cũng có hỏi thêm nhá thì anh chị cứ nói á. So I think that this uh, ranking is quite uh, different depending on the individual assessment, right? Mm. So if we do the the do the ranking again we do the sorting for example for hanoi only you will see the difference between the five groups so okay interesting yeah you're saying that different groups would have rated them differently hmm. so hanoi we've got 2.2 and a high on the schedule everything else low and group five did hanoi as well didn't they yeah Oh, that's, that's interesting. It's the same rating, one 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 six. So very interesting. But but you're right. It, this is a very. We're doing this very quickly. We're doing this part of a course. If you were doing it for real, then again you'd consult um, and see if there was agreement and disagreement, and then explore them, perhaps a bit more if necessary, to settle on a score that everyone tended to agree with. But it's interesting both group and group five and group one rated Hanoi the same. Um, sorry, I just wonder when when your team create that table, uh, do we have a checklist of the, each of the columns and categories? Do we have a checklist of things that you have to tick and consider in order to rate uh, and rating your, your evaluation? Yeah, um, I'm trying to recall because um, the example I gave you was some years ago, but it, it wasn't just done in a day. It, it took us a couple of weeks, I think, to to go through and think it through and research and talk, often talk to the airport manager at each location um, and and check that we, we understood it correctly and that they agreed with our assessment. So... I can't remember how many ports we had. It was quite a large number in the end, 32 or so, maybe more. Uh, and so we would have spoken to each airport manager to and got their agreement that we'd rated it correctly. So, um, and written notes. Um, I don't recall having, a, it's interesting, I don't recall having a checklist, but maybe we did. Uh, either way, we did certainly keep notes for each one and produced a, um, a supporting report. So if people wanted to know about it, they could have a look and see why we rated a port as we did. Um, and interestingly, for obvious reasons, our main hub, because of potential impact, we actually had a formal professional uh, natural hazard profile undertaken by a consulting team who were specialists in it. So we understood the very precise the earthquake risk, the tsunami risk, um, extreme weather conditions, likelihood, power supplies. We understood all the power supplies, where they came from, which power stations they came from, where the switch yards were. 
fuel. We knew exactly where the pipe was, where it was protected, what bridges it crossed over. Um, yeah, and actually as part of that work, we identified fuel as a really significant uh, has a risk um, because there was only one pipeline from a refinery, which is ooh, about 200 kilometers away at least. Um, so we did really consider that in detail and spoke to the fuel companies to see how much fuel they stored locally and how long it would take to burn through that fuel. And we actually requested that they can held at least a certain percentage of fuel locally as a result of that work. They also had an additional terminal so they could take fuel if a pipeline failed, but they'd allowed the terminal to be um, become unserviceable. So we were somewhat concerned by that, um, but the cost of re-establishing it was very high, so we didn't ask for that. What's interesting is many years later, only about four years ago, a digger hit the pipeline. Uh, and so the country was actually very significantly affected because it was it's a main it was a main port for New Zealand, um, and the army was actually called in to help move fuel from a refinery to the airport because we didn't have enough the country didn't have enough tankers to keep up. So it was interesting to have gone through rec the exercise, recognised it was a risk mitigated it to some extent but not entirely because we couldn't justify the cost of re-establishing the terminal uh, the ship terminal and then many years later quite recently now actually there was that event did occur and it was very significant um, for the country mm. um, it, it's not a case of Oh, we told you so, you know, oh, we were right. Um, but it does show that if you do the work carefully, you do do the research, where there is high risk, you maybe do very detailed research to understand the risk very well and do the mit make really clear why you are mitigating and how to what extent you're not mitigating a risk. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Um, there, there was another example, actually, it was another two other ports where the fuel was carried by ship along the coast and the, one ship was in refit in Australia and the other ship had an engine problem, so it was traveling very slowly. And so we were having to tanker fuel by air because to so that the fuel wouldn't run out of these other ports. So I think they're, they're practical examples where these things do go wrong. Uh, and we have thought about it before and made clear decisions about what you're going to mitigate and what you're not is really important. Mm. Okay, thank you everyone. Um, shall I, I'll share again, and then we'll move to the next exercise, which will be Similar, but, but a different exercise. So I'm looking at the time. We've got 10 minutes for lunch. So that's probably enough time to brief you before we do the exercise. OK. Uh, everyone can see the screen? Yeah. Yep, excellent. OK, I have got it right. Okay, so that's the exercise we've just done. Um, so now we'll um, do a similar thing, thinking about risk at a departmental level. So rather than the overall airline, we'll just start thinking about a department. So for these, the next uh, two exercises, each group will have to, each group will have to just decide what department they are representing or using as the exercise. And I appreciate you may have come from different departments, but if you pick one that you can all understand and is probably related to the team members, that would be really useful. 
So just a reminder, the, the idea here is to think about um, responses. So remember, we've got this model where we've got normal business processes for handling normal disruptions. We can have a coordinated response. We can have a centralized response and a really bad case, a direct, direct control. And also that um, you may, sorry, this should have come up on as one. Um, you may have specialist teams at that middle level for, um, for major business disruption. So that's just a reminder. Okay, so, so the next um, exercise is thinking about departmental or functional level. It might not, it might be more than one department, but what are the functions being carried out? And again, I'll just re remind you what that looks like in practice. This is a real example where the operations center, we've done an exercise of risk profiling and identified that there was one building in particular that was very high risk, partly because it was a fairly normal building with no specialist supplies, you know, only one power supply, for example, but it contained a number of really critical functions for the airline, functions that were needed for 24-7, for essentially. Even overnight, where there was a little flying they're preparing for the next day. So it was a real 24 seven operation. Um, each of these functions, and they were part of the support and delivery um, parts of a business, real time and business imperative. So really important in that case. And with what we did is we created a, an alternative location. So the next exercise um, after lunch, we'll break up into groups again. And like I say, each group has to decide um, what function or department um, they're, they're gonna um, model or be, be use as the exercise. So the instructions are um, within your workshop group, discuss and consider readiness arrangement. So this isn't responses being ready. Our first exercise was a risk. This is readiness. Choose a department as a subject or a department or a function. And so if you, on your spreadsheet, put the name of that on. So it could be a function or a department. And also importantly, describe its primary purpose. What is the objective what is that department or functions objective? Because that, remember, that's really important for understanding risk and the impact on the business. So that's describe the department's primary purpose. Determine what role in the customer journey. So is it again business function? Is it a delivery service function? Is it a leadership function or a support function? And then um, is it real time? business imperative or delayed priority function. So complete these boxes. So the first part of the exercise to decide which function or which department your group is going to use as for the exercise. And then having done that, um, so I, I've also reproduced the matrix in a slightly more complete form, just describing it a bit better major impact on objectives, just emphasizing this word objectives, moderate impact on objectives, and limited impact on objectives. So that's the functional objectives. I and mean, when it's likely to happen, possible may happen or unlikely to happen. So these numbers are the same ones as you've used before. And then the next part of the exercise will be to look at each of the services needed for that department to operate. So we'll do it a step at a time. So we'll do the first piece and we'll do. 
and we'll look at does it need power? If so, what are the existing arrangements, communications? Does it need IT? Does it people, specialist people? Does it interact with a customer? Does it have specialist equipment or spares or some other aspect, some other service it needs to carry out the function? And then we'll look at the risk. What would, what would there's a likelihood and if impact of losing one of these, how does it impact? What is the consequence? Yeah, what is the source of risk? What is the consequence? How likely and therefore the level of risk? So we're doing a risk exercise on that department. And then after we discuss that, we'll move on to looking at mitigation reproduce the level of risk and we look at what's a simple mitigation for that and what might be a full mitigation plan. So we'll go through this in a number of steps, but, it, but we'll start by identifying as a group a function and objective of, of the department or function that you've chosen, where it sits in a business, and then step our way through readiness, risk and response. So hopefully that makes sense. It's now uh, 12 noon, your time. Um, and I, I hopefully the, um, I've shared these slides with um, Tien already. So hopefully the, I'm sure the spreadsheet will be ready because it seems to happen very quickly. Okay, yeah. has anyone got any questions? Sorry, has anyone got any questions before we, on that? Can you show the uh, step one of the process of the exercise? Sorry, I missed that. Can you show the step one of the exercise, the identify yep. function? Um, so I think it will be easier if I can explain. Um, mọi người thì sau khi giờ nghỉ trưa ấy, thì bác ấy sẽ phân nhóm lại như mình sẽ thảo luận nhóm á. Thì sau giờ nghỉ trưa thì đầu tiên khi mà mình thảo luận thì mình sẽ nói về về cái việc là mình sẽ định xác định cái chức năng nhiệm vụ của cái nhóm của mình, của cái bộ phận của mình thì uh, trong đây thì có năm cái câu hỏi mình nên đặt ra là thứ nhất là mình sẽ xem là cái đối tượng và là cái cái phòng ban của mình là gì thứ hai mình sẽ là cái mục đích của cái phòng ban của mình hoạt động để làm gì và thứ ba là mình sẽ xem là cái vị trí trong cái cái chức năng nhiệm vụ của mình trong cái việc xây dựng hành trình khách hàng thì mọi người lưu ý cái hành trình khách hàng là cái mà như kiểu sale booking xong rồi đến cái giai đoạn là khách lấy đồ trả đồ đúng không ạ đó và tiếp cuối cùng uh, thứ, uh, thứ tư thì là trong cái chức năng nhiệm vụ này thì nó làm là cái uh, có cái đóng góp gì cho tổ chức là leader là sắp xếp là back office là front office hay như nào đó và cuối cùng thì là ở đây là cái uh, nhiệm vụ chính của chúng ta là dựa trên cái business con con tiếp chủ mua là cái hình vòng 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 ô hồ vòng vòng quả trứng ấy. thì là mình sẽ là mình sử dụng cái nhiệm vụ chức năng của bộ phận mình trong real time ứng dụng thực tế hay là ứng dụng nó hỗ trợ hoặc là mình có thể là không cái nhiệm vụ này có thể là được delay chẳng hạn Đấy. và trong cái các cái câu hỏi ở đây thì có các cái bảng ba cái bảng này ấy. thì chúng ta sẽ xem là mình xếp vào xem là cái nhiệm vụ của cái bộ phận đấy là như thế nào và chúng ta sẽ sẽ giải thích ạ yes can you just move to the next slide please mm -hmm. Sorry. bước thứ hai của cái quá trình này ấy, của cái bài tập này thì sau khi mà chúng ta xác định được các cái nhiệm vụ của tổ chức thì chúng ta sẽ rep là cái pandemic readiness tức là cái sự sẵn sàng để đối đầu với lại um, dịch bệnh của chúng ta thì là uh, chúng ta sẽ có các cái cái feature là các cái um, um, chức năng để mình mình xét mình kiểm tra thì mình sẽ có là có các cái existing arrangement này hazard tức là các cái nguồn mà liên mà gây nên cái rủi ro đó cái ảnh hưởng của cái rủi ro đó đến với cái bộ phận của chúng ta và cái sự khả năng xảy ra nó là như thế nào là how likely là khả năng xảy ra và cái level của cái tức là cái cấp độ ảnh hưởng với rủi ro thì chúng ta sẽ sử dụng cái bảng bên tay phải cuối màn hình nhé thì ở đây thì các cái um, feature các cái chức uh, năng ở đây thì chúng ta sẽ có là ảnh hưởng là power này là nhiên liệu là năng lượng uh, communication là truyền thông này it nhân sự này hàng khách các cái nguyên vật liệu này, vật tư và các cái 
cái khác mọi người thì suy nghĩ em là những cái khác là những cái gì đó, ở trong đấy ạ em the final one sheet và sau khi mà mình uh, uh, lập cái bảng như thế này thì mình sẽ có cái bảng cuối cùng là cái phản ứng của chúng ta là như thế nào tức là cái giải pháp của chúng ta đây là là gì ạ thì với tất cả những cái uh, ví dụ từ là năng lượng đến thiết bị trang thiết bị rồi nhân sự thì uh, chúng ta có được một cái gọi là đánh giá cái cấp bậc rủi ro đúng không ạ là high risk medium hay là low thì chúng ta sẽ có hai cái trường hợp là simple mitigation tức là mình giảm thiểu rủi ro tức là mình có cái giải pháp giảm thiểu và cái full mitigation thì chúng ta có thể nói là cái giải giải pháp giảm thiểu tối đa Đó, thì là mình sẽ có hai cái hoạt động như thế để mình suy nghĩ có biết là các anh chị có cái câu hỏi thắc mắc gì không ạ thì bây giờ mình sẽ hỏi luôn và sau đó thì mình nghỉ trưa Em chỉ thắc mắc là sao bài nó khó thế hả cô? Em có vấn đề có trả lời không? Chỉ có thắc mắc thế thôi Quá khó vấn đề luôn Thì mình liên quan đến khá là nhiều đến quản lý rủi ro với chị ạ Chúng ta sẽ cố gắng xem xem là quản lý rủi ro như thế nào Còn gì đúng không ạ? Để mình nghỉ chưa đây ạ Trưa nay không ăn được cơm ấy chị ạ, lò này Thank you, okay Thank you Enjoy your lunch everyone Thank you